Welcome to the next lesson of this computer-based training on the Spring Framework. I'm Michael, and in this lesson, we will start looking at one of the core features of the Spring Framework called dependency injection. I will introduce Spring application context and use it to define two components of our sample banking application and their relationship. The lifecycle of these components, or beans, will then be managed by the application context, and we will write an automated test that proves that we can retrieve the beans from the context. So far, we've only created a couple of packages and classes. In order to start using the Spring Framework, we have to add a dependency to our Maven project file. We are going to be using two Spring artifacts in this lesson, the core one called Spring Core and one called Spring Context to help us deal with the application context that I'm going to talk about shortly. Because we need more than one dependency on the Spring Framework, and because we should be using the same version of all the dependencies to avoid API conflicts, it is a good idea to create a variable in the POM file, which is the only place where the version of the dependency being used is defined. So that if we want, for example, to upgrade the version, we only need to change it in one place. There is a good principle in software development called dry, don't repeat yourself, and that's valid even for configuration like this. We then use this variable or property in the Maven terms to define the version of every spring dependency. From the previous lesson, we have an account domain class, an account repository that is capable of finding accounts by their account numbers, and a dummy implementation of the repository, which always returns null when asked to find an account object. We have a bank service interface defining a single method for transferring an amount of money from one account to another one. And we also have a default implementation that is completely empty at the moment. However, we have anticipated the fact that the service will need to use uh, the repository to retrieve the accounts by their account numbers. And we've decided that because this is a mandatory dependency, we are going to enforce that by making the account repository a constructor argument of the default bank service. In other words, an instance of the account repository must be available in order to create an instance of the default bank service. We are going to use the Spring Framework for dependency injection. It is going to inject the dependency on account repository onto the default bank service using constructor injection. And we are now going to create the configuration file that will instruct Spring to do so. Because we are going to be creating an instance of Spring's application context using this configuration, I'm going to name it applicationcontext.xml. In this file, we are able to define components or Spring beans that the framework will manage for us. The definition is done using XML and a specific namespace provided by Spring called the bean namespace. The namespace is pretty much a language on its own and we are going to be using that language to tell Spring which beans to create and what to do with them. Spring aware IDEs like the Eclipse based Spring source tool suite or IntelliJ IDEA that I'm using here We'll create the root bean tag with all the XML namespace definitions and schema locations for you. So let's tell Spring to create a bean for us. It will be stored in the application context under its ID that we're going to choose. And in this case, there's going to be account repository. The bean will be an instance of null account repository. So when we retrieve a bean with ID account repository from the application context, we will get an instance of null account repository. Spring will instantiate the bean when the application context is being created. And by default, the scope of this bean is singleton, which means every time we try to retrieve the bean from the application context, we will get the same instance. Because null account repository has no dependencies, we're done with it for now. And we can define another bean called bank service, which will be an instance of default bank service. Now we know that this class needs an instance of account repository to be injected into its constructor. Luckily, we have one of these defined already. So we're going to use a reference to the account repository that we've just defined as a constructor argument of default bank service. When the application context that uses this configuration file is being initialized, the beans we have just defined will be instantiated in the right order 
and dependencies injected as we've just declaratively specified here. So in this case, because account repository is needed as a dependency of the bank service, it will be instantiated first. It doesn't matter which one is actually declared first in the XML. Let's write a simple test that will create the application context from this configuration file. And in the test, let's verify that we can retrieve the beans from the context using their IDs. So we're gonna give it a name. The test method should have a descriptive name. So let's call it given two beans managed by Spring. When the beans are retrieved, they should not be null. And this is what we're indeed going to be verifying. The application context will be created as an instance of class path XML application context, which as the name suggests, looks for a configuration file with the name specified on the class path. Since the resources directory where our configuration file is placed is implicitly considered by Maven to be on the class path, all we have to provide is the file name. There are other means of creating the application context. For example, file system XML application context would look for a file on the file system with the specified path. After the first line of code here is finished executing, the beans defined in the application context configuration file will be instantiated and fully initialized, ready to be used. We will now verify that when these beans are retrieved by their IDs from the application context, they are not null. In fact, if they were not defined at all, and we try to retrieve them, an exception would be thrown. So calling the getBean method without the assertion would be a test on its own. But with assert not null, we're additionally verifying that there's actually an instance being created and returned. It is also important to realize that if we manage to successfully retrieve an instance of the default bank service, it means that Spring instantiated it injecting an instance of the account repository into its constructor, since the default bank service doesn't have a no argument constructor. So let's run the test by executing the Maven test phase from my IDE and see it pass. We have successfully created a Spring application context with two beans and a constructor injected dependency between them. And we have verified it with a test. That's the end of this lesson. Thank you and goodbye.